Yo, what's going on, good people? Foots here. I'm back at you guys with another mock draft. Now, normally, this is a Cowboys channel, um, but we welcome in all NFL teams, all 32. Let me know what you guys think of this mock draft. Um, I'm going to talk on the Cowboys, but I'm also going to talk on the Browns. I'm going to talk on the Ravens. I'm going to hit, you know, kind of need and kind of like what I saw in this divisional round of the playoffs, you know, kind of what happens when 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 ideals shift in the NFL from teams and, and organizations. Like every year, ideals shift. So, you know, three, four, five years ago, it was throw the ball all over, all over the field. You didn't really need to draft a first-round running back. Well, then, you know, Let's think back two years ago, 2016, you drafted Ezekiel Elliott. Actually, let's think back to Ty Gurley being drafted by the Rams. And then, you know, he was drafted, I think, ninth overall by the Rams. And then Ezekiel Elliott, a guy who had success early on as a Cowboy, Leonard Fournette, year after that. So I think running backs are going to be pushed up. That's just one example. Um, so all in all, I say that to say... Nobody knows what's going to happen in this draft. And it's very early. That's why I'm not doing a two-round. Um, but this is this is um, all in all. I say that this is a this is a one round, and this is just my opinion. I'll be able to do a two round probably after the Senior Bowl. Then I do like a three round after the Combine, and guys really start getting slotted. But nonetheless, it's just my opinion. Nobody knows what's gonna happen with this draft. Nobody knew, you know, that Johnny Manziel will fall. Well, people probably knew because they knew he had character issues. But you know, nobody knew that the Jags would come up and get Blake Bortles the year he got drafted or that the Texans would jump, you know, a bunch of slots to get Deshaun Watson, a guy who I'll admit I wasn't that high on. So it's just my opinion, guys. Um, the fact of the matter is it's not an exact science. Mel Kuyper's going to say one thing. Tom Shea's going to say another thing. The list goes on and on with, on with all the draft gurus. But the fact remains... Nobody knows what's in that team's war room or what's in that team's need, but I'm going to hit some needs. And without further ado, let's get to the first pick. So you're talking about the Cleveland Browns, and you're talking about a franchise who just been bad. 1-23 over the last couple of years. It's terrible. They fire Sashi Brown. They bring in John Dorsey. And I was just reading up something on Dorsey where he said, we just didn't give Hugh Jackson good players. We didn't give him real players. And you think about that front office with that, Coaching staff, they weren't on the same page. Well, look, in this draft, gave him the best player. I made it easy for him. Draft Saquon Barkley, worry about the quarterbacks later because, you know, there's a divide in the, in the quarterbacks when it comes to these guys. Do you like Sam Darnold? Do you like Josh Rosen? Do you like Baker Mayfield and the leadership things that he brings? Yes, he has some character issues, but to me, I like Baker over all of them because he can come in and he can, you know, elevate players around him just by the the spunk and the in the in the in the in the fight and the fervor that he gives. You know, when I read things that Josh Rosen is comparable to Jay Cutler, I don't like that because I don't want a guy who just kind of blends in with the team. I want a leader. So, pick one. I go Sam. I mean, excuse me. I go Saquon Barkley. Pick two. I go Sam Darnold to the Giants. Makes a lot of sense. Come in, learn behind Eli. Pick three, I go Quentin Nelson. Now, this may surprise a couple of people, but this guard from Notre Dame, he's a top five player. I think the Indianapolis Colts could still use some fixing on that line, so I like this pick. Let's jump down to the sixth pick. Um, well, pick five, I go Josh Rosen to Denver. Now, here's the thing about that pick. It's been reports that John Elway saying that he doesn't want to draft another quarterback baloney don't believe it the fact of the matter is you keep drafting quarterbacks until you hit even though you know Paxton Lynch was crying on the sideline and he pretty much is looking like he's not going to be the guy if you don't get Kirk you don't get Alex Smith you may not want Alex Smith you get washed out in free agency what else are you going to do you can't go into that you know into this next into this 2018 season with what's um I don't even Brock Osweiler or whoever the other guy, Trevor Simeon, you can't do it. The team won't be have any umph around it. You got to get somebody in there. Josh Rosen is probably the most ready in. You know, they say that Josh Rosen is comparable to to Luck when he came out. No, they do that every year. Scouts, 
hot takers, all these guys do that every year when it comes to, you know, who's the quarterback, the hot quarterback that's rising and has the look. He's not comparable to Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is the only person comparable to Andrew Luck. And you can see Andrew Luck can't stay healthy if he doesn't have the supporting cast in the in the in the in the in the O line around him. That's part of the reason why I gave him why I gave the Colts Quentin Nelson. Now, let's jump down to a couple picks that make that may make sense. You guys may not like. I got the Oakland Raiders drafting Denzel Ward. Everything that I'm hearing is that Denzel Ward is going to blow up the combine, that he's going to run a 4-2. If he does that, he's going to be the first corner off the board. Even though I have Josh Jackson graded a little bit higher, I'm not mad at Oakland for drafting Denzel Ward. I think he's a great, great corner. And, you know, you drafted his teammate last year, Gary Conley. Gary on Conley. Might as well take him as well. Um, now let's go to the, the Washington Redskins. I gave them Derwin James. I'm hearing that he could fall. I got Minka Fitzpatrick going nine to the Niners. So I'm hearing that Derwin James could fall. He wouldn't fall anywhere out of my top 15 at all. And to me, this is an upgrade over anything that Washington has, including Swearinger. Good player, but the fact is, Derwin James just makes plays. You find somewhere on the back of that defense and you let him play. Um... I got the I got the Chargers drafting Ronnie Harrison wanted to switch it up a bit, and this is the pick that everybody's probably waiting for. I got the Cowboys drafting Tremaine Edmonds. Now this is a guy that I've been very very high on. I actually have Roquan Smith falling in this draft. You look at Tremaine Edmonds' size. You look at how fast he is to the ball. He's basically a carbon copy of Sean Lee, just bigger and taller, but he can he tackles so well. Um, a little bit of of, of coverage issues, yes, but I'm just talking about how he feels, how he's never fooled, how he flows sideline to sideline. You pair him, Jalen, Sean Lee, if you lose Hitchens, if you don't, he can be a good backup. And then when, not if, but when Sean Lee gets hurt, he can step in and make plays for you. I think that'd be a great pick for the Cowboys. Um, so again, I got the Rams t going corner right here to various McFadden from Florida State. I think that would be a great pick for them. I got the Atlanta Falcons getting the steal of the, of the first round, at least, and Josh Jackson. I just look. He's a playmaker. You put him out there on the island, he's going to get picks. He's going to jump balls. I love Josh Jackson's tape. And I got the Minnesota Vikings taking a chance on Arden Key. And I got the New England Patriots drafting Dramont Jones. So you guys let me know what you think of this draft or this mock. This is my 2.0 mock draft. Um, all the picks are in the description box. You guys let me know what you think. Like I said, I think that there's going to be a shift. <clears throat> and as you can see, I'll just name, in, I, in my second round, when I do my second round, I have a lot of these running backs maybe even pushing up after, you know, Ronald Jones, a couple of these other guys maybe even pushing up. But as you can see, I got Darius Geis in the first. I obviously have Saquon Barkley going one. You know, I don't have Nick Chubb in my first or second, but I have guys like the kid from Auburn. Um, I have Ronald Jones early in the second. He may get pushed up into the first depending on needs. I have... You know, Raekwon Smith going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They don't know what's going to happen with Ryan Shazier. So I kind of went, teams are going to realize throwing the ball all over the yard. I don't have Calvin Ridley. I think I'm going to have, oh, I have Calvin Ridley in the first round opposite of, uh, I want him playing opposite of Michael Thomas with the New York with the New Orleans Saints. Just a, a great pick. But nonetheless, I think teams are going to realize that defense and running the football you know the meat and potatoes of of what the what the what the NFL used to be and what football is is gonna get you back. You don't need spectacular quarterback play. I think that's what we're seeing. So you guys, let me know what you think of this mock draft. I actually have the Cowboys taking Tremaine Edmonds. I have the Cleveland Brown, Browns, excuse me, going first with Saquon Bar Barkley, and then I have the Browns again going quarterback with Baker Mayfield. I just think he's a leader. I think he comes into that franchise and can, can elevate guys. So that's why I gave him to the Browns at uh, four. So let me know what you guys think of this draft. It's your boy Fuss the King. Like, share, subscribe. Come in, agree or disagree respectively. Peace.